Well, hello, welcome to the farm. Outside in the spring, it's planting time. It's, it's time to get excited and kind of do some plans that maybe I've been thinking about. And for me, that's kind of finishing up, not really finishing up, I'm never finished, but doing more around my new walkway. So last year I did a, kind of finished up a remodel and put in a new walkway to go to the door. And this side has always just kind of fallen off. And I always knew I wanted to put in another row of boxwood. Yes, boxwood, I have quite a few. They're evergreen, they're deer resistant, rabbit resistant. They can grow and be any shape you kind of want and any size you want if you keep them trimmed. So it's pretty simple to plant them. It can be pretty easy to plant things, but I think it's always good just to see those tips and tricks that anyone can use to see how it could help. So I am putting them right now where some grass is. You can see all the sod, the grass goes pretty much up to the new walkway where they had to do a little bit of work. Obviously they dug it away. So I want to strip now this grass and sod back to expose a new bed. And the reason we take the sod away is because if you plant right in the grass, it competes with the plant. It takes moisture away from the surface. The roots can compete with the, with the new plant roots and you don't want to do that. So instead what I'm going to do, I laid the box out just more to know kind of how much area I was going to need for a bed. And now what I want to do is actually draw a string line so I have a straight line to know where I'm taking the grass away. So I have two just wooden posts. You can use plastic posts. You could do whatever you want. I'm going to use wood ones and I have one staked in the ground. I'm just going to tie some twine to it and then I'm going to put the other one over and make sure I have a straight line. We're going to just have kind of like a plumb line so we know. Now I need to take the grass out around all over here. So I want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Make sure I only need to do it once. You just take my, this is, this is so easy. So I'm drawing it over here. I'm gonna take it a little bit farther than I probably need to. And then I may need to reset this one, but we're gonna draw it. You can kind of see, I'm gonna give myself some excess and cut it and then tie it. And then we will make sure our line is plumb. So I'll get this tied and then I'll show you how straight it is. So I have my line ran and I made it straight and I actually even went ahead and I measured from the edge of the walk to the string just to make sure all along that it was staying even because when you're going to the work of starting a new bed, you might as well start it off correctly. So when I edge a bed that doesn't have a brick edging or anything, all around my place and the other farm, I use a half moon edger. I've used this for years. It, to me, it creates a clean line, a sharp cut, and it gives you about a four inch depth when you're making that cut. So on a lot of my beds, I kind of do that English style where I will leave that clean edge exposed and I will just dig it out once a year kind of with this. But it also when I start a new bed, I use this too. So I'm gonna follow the line and I'm gonna make a cut and pull it back. And it's really simple, honestly. And this is how I edge any of my beds. Starting a new bed, I just think it makes it so easy. And when you pull it back, it opens and takes that sod back and makes a really nice, you can see it down here, this beautiful, clean line. Look how simple and beautiful that is. So then, by the way also, this is my mom and my grandma and me. I don't throw out this beautiful grass. Look how lush and beautiful it is. No, no. This has a beautiful root system on it. People pay money for sod, people. No, no, no. I'm gonna put this in in places where I need grass. So after I make my cut line all the way down, I take a spade. This is why there's different shovels. This is a spade and it has more of a flat. It has just a slight curve to it. There are more flat ones too. But I take this and this is what I actually cut the sod with. So when I want to go back, I just work it. It's a nice sharp edge. I work it underneath the grass, pull up, and then look at that beautiful grass I'm pulling up. It's beautiful. And it's just exposing then a new bed underneath. This is to me, this is the exciting part of when you start a new bed because where you had maybe grass before, where you had something else, all of a sudden, you have all these new possibilities. You have this brand new area that's just clean, empty. It, the bad part is it gets addicting, and then you'll start maybe doing this in other areas, and soon you'll just have beds all over. <sighs> but you know what? It's worth it. So I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna take my half moon edger, cut along the edge. I'm gonna then take my spade, work up and get all this grass, which, Honestly, right now we've had some good rain, so it's coming up extremely easy. It's exposing the rich black dirt underneath. Thank you, Iowa, for that dirt. And then when I get that done, 
we're gonna plant some boxwood. It's that fun and it's that easy. We are back in the flower bed. So I made the edge and I laid my box out how I want to plant them. And you can see what I did for now for my edge, I'm not doing limestone or anything. I just used that half moon edger and made a really clean cut all the way along. That's about four inches. This is what I do in my backyard and a lot of my beds. It's more of an English style of gardening. And what that four inches does, if you leave it exposed, don't cover it with mulch, don't cover it with dirt. It hardens off the roots of the grass so it doesn't want to work into the bed. So for now this year, I'm just going to keep that clean edge and that's what's going to be the edge of my bed. But now I'm going to plant my boxwood. So boxwood in general, why do we like them? They're evergreen, they're simple, they're pretty easy to grow. These are green velvet variety. So they have a green, dark, glossy leaf. The new growth is a little bit lighter, but then it hardens off to a darker green. And they're pretty spherical in their growth habit. Now, you can see that I like to prune mine usually. So the ones I have directly across, which are the same type, I kind of keep them that shape. So every year, I give them a light haircut in usually May or June or July or August, but no later than August. And I keep them kind of a nice shape. You can keep them really short. I have some that I keep about a foot tall as a hedge, or you can let them grow three to four feet, which is their natural size. So I'm gonna dig holes about two times roughly the size of the container that they're in. It doesn't have to be exact, but you just roughly wanna get it so it has a nice kind of place to grow it. Now you can see, I have, I'm lucky guys, and I know I'm lucky, I have wonderful dirt here in Iowa. We have this beautiful, loamy, rich, black soil. And look how nice it is. So I never really think about amending my soil. Now, if you have really clay, hard soil, soil that doesn't drain well, think it needs something, of course amending it with a good compost is always a good idea. But I would probably only amend it in the hole about 50%. So 50% your native soil, 50% of a good compost. Because you still wanna get your plant roots used to the native soil. Because outside of your hole that you're digging, the tree, the shrub, the perennial you're planting, its roots need to grow accustomed to it. So it's important to only amend your soil, maybe up to 50%. And then every year you could top dress it with compost to slowly work into the soil for things like that. You just don't wanna amend only that small hole. And then the plant roots, they're just not gonna be, they're not gonna be liking what's outside of it. So once we get that hole kind of dug and start assessing it, we need to look at our shrub. So once we have the shrub outside of the container, you can start assessing its roots. These aren't too bad, but if they're really tight and circling, it's always good to break them up, just like I would a small annual I was planting or anything. And even this one, I'm gonna take it and just kind of rough up those roots. Because as roots grow in a container, they get really tight and bound up, and it's hard for them to break out of that habit and go laterally out into the soil like you need them to do. So I'm going around and I'm breaking them up, and this is gonna actually stimulate new root growth sounds counterintuitive, but just like when you trim a shrub, this is stimulating new growth. So you can see now how nice and loose it is. It's not tight. And we can now start checking the soil level. So actually that's pretty good. I don't want to go any deeper than container. And honestly, if anything, I plant slightly higher because once you disturb the soil and move it out of the hole, it always will slightly settle once it's planted again and go a little bit deeper. So it's never a bad idea to go slightly higher than you think. And if you're looking at these hard water stains, that's just gonna be either calcium deposits or from something the grower put on them, but that will all come off in time. You know, I sometimes have gone the length of spending the money for really large, established, nice, big shrubs. But sometimes, you know, these are like half the cost, if not more, less money. And they grow pretty quickly. You can shape them how you want. So don't worry if you can only buy smaller shrubs. They're gonna grow, it just may take time. So I'm gonna to continue to put this soil back around them. I'm gonna press it in as I do. I'm gonna go down the line, plant the rest, and we're gonna water and have a nice new hedge. So to wrap it up, you always obviously need water. No, that's not just because plants need water. But after you plant something, you have air pockets and air bubbles that work in with those roots as you push the soil in. That final watering, that first watering actually gets those air pockets away because those air pockets can actually dry out little sections of root. They can actually not be good for the plant. So you wanna give it a really good saturation. Start with a well-watered plant and end with a well-watered plant 
to make sure that it's just off to a good start. So once they're planted, it's pretty easy care. You obviously wanna keep them watered throughout the summer, but that doesn't mean to overwater them. Actually put your finger as far down as you can to check if there's moist soil. If it's wet, don't water them. Wait till they dry out because plants don't wanna sit in water either. Boxwood are easy. They can take quite a bit of shade. They can take full sun, deer resistant, rabbit proof. You have to worry about boxwood blight now, but you can check if that's in your area and buy them from nurseries that you know are quarantining the boxwood and taking care of them. As always guys, share my videos around because yeah, it helps me, but I hope it helps so many other people to see how easy and fun it can be to work in your yard, to grow something, plant something, and start something new because that's what gardening is all about. Check my website, wiseguide.com for more tips, for tricks, for recipes. It's where everything's at and it's where I'm at. Otherwise I'm outside planting, which I'm gonna do more of and finish watering. So go plant something, be nice, be kind, because garden people always are. I'm gonna go water. Thank you.